Welcome back to the Means Report, everybody. So happy that you stayed with us as we transition now into a topic that is very important, especially in this part of the country and especially this month. It is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, and so we're going to talk about the research that's going on right here at home and how you perhaps can take advantage of it. And joining me now is thoracic surgeon Dr. Karsten Schroeder, he of the Medical College of Georgia at Augusta University, and lungs and lung cancer are indeed his specialty. Dr. Schroeder, thank you for being here. Well, I appreciate that no, you're welcome anytime. Let me first of all ask you about the occurrence of lung cancer in the southeast. I know that you have uh, been studying those numbers. You've done screenings and this is kind of a hotbed for it in the south, correct? That's correct. So we um, started a lung, free lung cancer screening here at uh, Augusta University with the cancer center together. And uh, that's all part of a um, a, a study that we found nationally wide that about 1% of patients um, that have high risk for lung cancer. What's a high risk patient high ri have? High risk is normally when one is in the age between 50 and 55 and older, uh, has smoked about 30 pack years, means a pack per day for about 30 years, mm -hmm. though 15 years, two packs is also 30 pack years. And uh, these are high-risk people, and uh, they should get a screening. And if the diagnosis is positive, which it is for about one in 100 people who are screened, what and, do you, go and ahead. And that is nationally. That's a nationally study that we had. And then we find actually more here in the South. What usually happens after that diagnosis occurs? Normally, um, it's then a workup done for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, CT scan, PET scan, bronchoscopies, biopsies. It's normally worked up. Do you find in the typical lung cancer patient, if there is such a thing, that uh, the disease targets a certain race, or you mentioned the age group, but uh, an ethnicity more than others? Um, we, we did some studies on it. Uh, we have a nice paper out for that, and it's in, in the works to be published. Um, but what we actually found is that we, instead of 1% lung cancer, we find 3% lung cancers in our area here. Um, so even worse in African-American uh, population. And um, my take on this is actually is healthcare access um, and smoking incidents. And I think these both together um, make it uh, a race-related issue and I think mainly actually a healthcare issue because we see also um, as further we go out of the area of Augusta and go even in less served areas we normally find even more lung cancers in later stages. I know I'm gonna guess at least that a lot of lung cancer cases are related to smoking. What are some other factors that could cause lung cancer in, in men and women? 90% is related to smoking. Mm -hmm. So, um, but sure, um, we have heavy metals, asbestos, uh, radiation. Do you still see asbestos cases? They actually come. Really? And it takes, the, pr the problem is with asbestos, as with smoking, you accumulate actually a risk of um, poison or your, your agent that, that causes cancer, and it comes about 30 to 40 years later. So asbestos exposure in the 70s we see them now or in the 80s it, same as with smoking mm -hmm. smoking in the 80s 90s now we see the lung cancers if somebody is listening to you right now and they meet this profile they smoke or they work in an environment that's conducive to exposure at what age should they get screened um, this is all um, by guidelines from the nccn which, uh, which is the um, Comprehensive Cancer Center, National Comprehensive Cancer Center, and these guidelines have two groups. One is the purely smoking group, which I earlier alluded to, and the other one is when they have smoked about 20 years, are over 50s, and have one of these, like COPD, uh, have family history of a lung cancer, exposures to other agents, um, and that is uh, the second group. So, and we screen the people up to 80 years, which is a little bit different than the national uh, average, but uh, that is uh, how, how we put them in the risk study. I once interviewed a brain surgeon to talk about the way that surgery has changed over the years and that its level of invasiveness has diminished, especially with the advent of tools like the gamma knife and other things that can go in and zap the tumor away versus 
opening someone up and cutting it out. Are you seeing the same thing on the lung cancer front? Uh, yes, and as a surgeon, one is certainly frightened about it. No, I'm actually... <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't I, want a robot to take over. Right. No, it is, it is actually a wonderful tool. I'm actually um, a part of the team where we uh, do um, stereotactic body radiation to this. We actually often put metal markers in the tumor, and while we're breathing, the, actually the machine locks onto that, uh, onto that area, and we can treat really focused. Wow. And with this, we actually get close to the same survival benefit than with surgery. Close to, I say, because we don't have long-term follow-up for this uh, uh, modality yet. But uh, for older people, people with really bad lung function where we cannot do the surgery, this is the, a very good tool, better than the classical radiation type, which actually destroys more of the surrounding lung than with that modality. Dr. Schroeder, what can you tell us, and again, it may be too early here, but what can you tell us about the dangers of e-cigarettes and vaping? We see so many young people trying this. Are there lung cancer risks there? I bet there are. We just don't know yet. We don't have hard data. But you know that the FDA um, put it in, into the category of risky substances, and you cannot just buy it over the counter anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it is now 18 year and older purchase like cigarettes and in the same setting. So it is certainly has, it is nicotine in there. Nicotine is a poison. Yep. Um, we don't really know what else is in there because it's not regulated. One can just make one of these vapors and put whatever in there and we inhale it. Yep. I would not recommend it. And it's also proven not to be a good transitioning tool like nicotine patches or uh, really medications for quick smoking. Um, it hasn't shown that it really helps. Often it is actually both inhaled smoking and additional the other nicotine uh, vapors and people really don't come off from the smoking. And that is the only way to st stop the risk or lower the risk for heart attack, for strokes, yep. for cancers, if one stops the inhaled smoking. Even cataracts. Cater uh, you, I mean, you, you open a, a textbook in medical school, yeah. uh, and number one or two is either smoking or, or other, other substances. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we've spent most of this interview talking about lung cancer, but the impact from smoking can, can wreck your whole body. Yes. How can somebody take advantage of a free lung cancer screening? How can they come see you and, and, and find out more? Um, we, we have an a email address, um, um, lung at Augusta at you. Uh, we have a telephone number um, that we can call, and we have a coordinator who gives them an interview, uh, goes through an interview or process, and sees if the person is actually a high-risk person. Uh, for, for my, um, the, the, the idea about that is we can only screen people that they are in high risk, because that's where it's proven that the risk of giving somebody X-rays through a CT scanner is actually beneficial over the risk of getting a disease from the from radiation. And just to narrow it down for our audience very quickly, you're talking about 55 to 85 pack a day for 30 years. Is that right? Did I get it right? Yeah, 50 to 55 years old and a, a pack a, 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 for 30 years a pack a day. Okay, 50 to 55 pack a year for 30 years. So if you know somebody who's absolutely smoked a ton and is in that age group, uh, give a call, see if you qualify, at least take that first step. Uh, Dr. Karsten Schroeder, thank you for your time. I know it flew by, and thank you for what you do to help, to help save lives, quite frankly. We appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Dr. Karsten Schroeder of MCG at AU, we're grateful to him for sure, as we all are, all of our docs who come to us from MCG at Augusta University.